Um, so today I am not really going to tackle the wiring. What I'm going to start doing is stripping off um, some of this binding um, to expose the cabling underneath to help me get a better idea of the relationship. Things like these junctions, you never quite know which way cables are going, so I need to kind of open them up. But I'm going to keep all the cables with their connectors on so at least we know their relationship and location. And then later on we can get down to labelling individual cables. Um, but today's job is, is basically just pulling apart the uh, the uh, wrap on this stuff and finding out where stuff goes and there's a lot of it. So I've spent 10 minutes pulling the insulation off which is wrapped around this very soft, cheap, nasty plastic wrapping and exposing the cables. I would be lying to you if I said that my anxieties aren't kicking off right now. But I spent five, ten minutes just thinking about what we're doing. And I think if you look at it as a whole, then yes, it is overwhelming. But if you look at it as individual components, then it starts to become a little bit more manageable. I'm also pleased that I didn't discard this because this is like the where do cables go guide at the front end. We're attempting round one to keep the connectors uh, where possible and change connectors um, where possible, like for example the clocks, I'll try and use the old clocks connector, solder that in. I found an excellent website called 12 Volt Planet. Um, they do electrical cabling by the meter, it's cheaper than you'll find probably anywhere else, including eBay, um, and they have a wide variety of colour choices. So I was able, in most cases, to get the same colour cabling that I am moving and chopping about. So that should help fault diagnosis in the future and make everything look a bit more professional. Uh, I've been humming and ahhing about what size to go for and in the end I went for 2mm and the sample of 1.5 I had seemed a bit skinny. In hindsight I probably would have been alright with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the connector off of the old clocks and um, solder it directly to the new clocks, taking out the old one. Um, that will also allow me to marry up the correct cables from this to the correct cables to this. A fairly straightforward job of taking the connector off the old um, binnacle cluster and matching up the relatively simple and same colour coded cables. I've tried to keep the cables uh, at a reasonable length so that all these connector blocks come together at the same place. Where the Chinese factory had used insulation tape I've replaced it with uh, heat shrink. Let's try this one handed. Click. Excellent. We've got a fuel gauge. Stage one. Wah ha ha. Get in there. Go left. Yes. And right. Excellent. Full beam. Yes. Excellent. Playing around with some uh, cable routing. Uh, just rough guide to what we're doing. Where it's going to go. Ignore the uh, green channel. Again, that will be used or a colour similar to this. It'll run back and up and uh, hopefully terminate somewhere up here, uh, carrying all the relevant cables. You'll have to excuse me, I'm not feeling brilliant today. I've got a banging headache and I feel like I've got a cold coming on. And hopefully it's not the dreaded COVID. Uh, I'm going to take some paracetamol now and uh, go and die somewhere. Another day, another dollar. I'm going to pick up where we left off um, with the wiring. It's two days later and we actually have some daylight and we've got Nimbus who's come to help us as usual. So this morning, so I'm full of cold at the moment so I've got a bit of a gruff voice but this morning the idea is to uh, connect up these cables to the ECU uh, system. So I'm going to leave some excess so that if we need to adjust the wiring limb forward and back it gives us room to play with it would be tedious to watch me working on wiring so I'm just going to um, do a bit of soldering up here get some heat shrink on there um, and then when I've got something to show you I'll, I'll bring you back now that the ECU is wired I want to look at the ignition and obviously it's up here at the moment and we want it to be back here 
Part of the complication is the old immobiliser um, circuit is sort of tied in with the ignition. I'm going to cut off this wrapper and then start tracing wires. A lot of the immobiliser circuit isn't actually doing anything. There's only two cables that we need to really uh, retain, I suppose. That is the blue and white cable and the black and white cable because they're intrinsically linked with the uh, ECU system. Everything else it effectively terminates here. Right, getting into it um, with the ignition switch, I have disconnected this blue and white from the ignition um, loom, which is attached to the old immobiliser. I've disconnected that and I'm able to pull it all the way back to the back of the bike where ultimately we're going to need it. We've got a red cable that connects directly into the hot battery cable, um, which will be an easy, he says, an easy move. We have a black cable which feeds power from the ignition switch so taking it from the battery when the switch is turned it powers up the black circuit and the black is downstream of the ignition switch power source um, so we need to extend the black cable all the way back and then we can rejoin onto that connector under the seat we have green which is earth which again we can just disconnect from this very chinese looking earth <laughs> Point. We can add that to any earth point under the seat. It's been a it's been a long afternoon's work. Um, nothing really complicated. It's just taking your time and getting everything right. Um, so we've got the ignition switch, which is now wired in uh, using our shortcuts. So we've got earth to earth, the blue and white cable, which ultimately goes into the black and white cable, uh, with the ignition off connects to earth, and that kills the CDI unit. Um, then we've got black and red. Red is the permanent power feed in and black is the power out from the ignition switch. Right, ignition key on. Excellent. So we've got power to the fuel tank sender unit. Have we got lights on the clocks? Yes, we do. Uh, indicators. Excellent. Left, right. So we have successfully moved the ignition barrel from up here to down here under the seat. So we now have power to play with. The next job on the list is the rectifier. Um, and we've got to somehow move it under the seat. So I'm going to pick through that now and see where we get to. Black, red and green, which we know are power from the switch, permanent power and earth. All three of these are already under the seat where we fitted the ignition switch and the various other parts. And these two I'm going to trace back heading south. I've tracked the yellow and white wires uh, down to the stator. Um, so we should be able to feed these cables back from the front end and straight in under the seat. We'll be able to loosen cabling, shorten it down um, and hopefully we'll be able to junction it off up here and back up with the rest of the loom. Right, the workshop is an absolute pigsty absolutely disgraceful the amount of tools and wire and more tools and tape and oh god it's an absolute tip i think i'm at a point where i'm hoping she'll start um everything is connected the light has failed completely today so it's um shed light only but uh, that is the moved wiring harness. Um, I've tried to keep it as organised as possible. Um, hopefully we'll get this all loom wrapped eventually. Okay, power on, lights on. Indicator, indicator, brake light, maybe. Yay, brake light, brake light, excellent. Right. Uh, I'm going to attempt to start it and it might just go bang or it might work. Let's find out. See what happens. Well, it cranks, that's good. It might take a moment for the fuel to get back in and fill up the car because it has been um, unplugged for a little while. Or it's not working. Crap. 
cranking speed's getting better. Come on, you can do it. Maybe something's wrong. I haven't checked for spark. So it must be something else, possibly fuel, I'll look into it. The, the problem was, as I suspected, a fueling issue. Um, to fill the carburetor you need a vacuum to open the petcock um, and it's a very slow process. So if the carburetor has dried out completely, it means that uh, it takes a while for the float bolt to fill up whilst cranking. The vacuum's very low. Right, remember to turn the ignition on. Goodness for that. Right, that is the end of a very long day uh, on my knees doing the electrics of the scooter. Um, I should feel really elated that it's working, but because I'm so full of cold and feeling really crappy, uh, it's kind of taken the edge off it a bit. Um, I've got to go through it now and wire in the headlamps and the other ancillaries. Uh, I've got to weld brackets on for indicators, and I haven't actually worked out what I'm going to do with the front indicator, whether to go for bar end um, flasher units or whether to go for something a bit more traditional. But uh, that's for another day when I'm not hanging. This has been uh, quite a, yeah, it's taxed my brain to the maximum, really. And I guess for an auto electrician, this is like bread and butter stuff. But for me, it's not my thing. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's cold, it's dark. And I think I've earned myself a beer tonight. Thank you. And thanks again, everyone who does watch these videos. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, but if you did like it, um, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. And please feel free to leave a comment. Um, yeah, any feedback would be useful. I never quite know how long to make these videos, whether to make long ones, short ones, etc. So um, yeah, perhaps you guys can let me know. Thank you. Bye for now. What do you think, Nimbus? Was today a good day? Did we get a lot done? Are you happy with it? You're not happy with it. <laughs> what? Do you like that one? No, okay, fair enough. Uh, I'm guessing you're telling me it's tea time. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Ignore me.